sketchy conspiracy theory that you may not believe or want to buy into is the King's owner contributing to the hand fracture of De'Aaron Fox. This was Vivek Ranadive lighting the beam after the King's Game 1 victory with De'Aaron Fox. Not gonna lie, it seems as if Vivek thinks he's going to get to the beam button first, ramping himself up to make it the hardest beam lighting of his whole life. Unfortunately, he and Fox are not on the same page, and he comes down really hard on De'Aaron's fingers. It's a high velocity hit that when you play back, you can tell was no joke. Maybe I'm reading too much into this, but you tell me if Fox sort of looks at his owner like, did you really just smash down on my hand like that? I mean, after your first playoff win in years, especially with how De'Aaron was acting upbeat before this beam lighting, you'd think he'd be getting hyped or something. While he does a good job to keep himself in check, he's just kind of staring down Vivek and you can see his right arm go up if you look close enough, almost as a reaction to being in a combination of pain and shock. Now, I'm not saying that alone fractured his hand, I'm strictly bringing this up because three games later, Fox came up clutching his hand on a drive to the basket in Game 4, appearing to suffer serious discomfort on a play where Kavon Looney seems to only graze his hand. If you've ever played basketball or sports in general, you know that grazing isn't enough to fracture a finger alone. Later, multiple reports stemming from Yahoo Sports were released and try to key in on the head-scratching part about these reports. While it's not clear exactly when Fox sustained the injury, he was seen clutching his left hand after a contact on a drive with 4.35 remaining in the fourth quarter. He drew a foul on Jordan Poole on the drive, then appeared to draw contact to his left hand from Golden State center Kevon Looney. Fox immediately shook his left hand after the play, then clutched his index finger with his right hand. He didn't leave the game. He drove and hit a floater from the right elbow 14 seconds later and showed no outward sign of injury after the initial contact. He remained in the game after a timeout and played through the final buzzer. And that's about all the reporting we have regarding this Fox injury. If you didn't notice, there's still no specific instance reported about when the injury was suffered, and not even from Fox himself. You could argue an old man wouldn't be able to injure a pro athlete like that, a valid argument. Again, I'm not saying it all happened right there. However, based off the fact that Fox's reaction to that first bit of supposed contact from Looney wasn't a reaction of being shocked after getting hurt, and no one else seemed to realize anything different about him, that leads you to believe that seeming to be first bit of contact from Looney wasn't the initial instance where De'Aaron's hand, his left hand, was bothered. In his interviews about the injury after reporters saw him wearing a brace for the first time following his practice session, Fox had a simple message for the media, I'm playing. He went on to say, quote, As we got going, as the pain started going away, I felt I could take my normal shot. I think I'll be good. The ball handling was actually fine. As soon as I got out here, dribbling and passing was fine. The most important thing was, can I shoot as painful as possible? End quote. There's nothing suspicious about that. However, you just think he'd want to talk about when he got hurt. If Sacramento's organization was able to sweep this under the rug, it'd show how far the Kings' togetherness as an overall franchise has evolved in such a short period of time. However, what's sketchy is, I looked everywhere to find what Fox said about how he got hurt, but came up empty. Only other quotes of Fox I could find regarding what happened to his finger was De'Aaron saying right after his supposed initial injury in Game 4, quote, Adrenaline was pumping, so I was fine the rest of the game. After the game, it really started to swell up, and that's when I began to feel it. I expected to get hit. At this point of the season, something's hurt anyway. You play through the pain, no excuses coming from me. I'm very optimistic about tomorrow, as long as the pad on my finger is fine then I feel like I'm good to go." End quote. I wanted to reiterate that I searched every crevice to try and find De'Aaron talking about how he even got hurt, but the only report was that he was believed to have suffered the injury. That, plus the fact that Vivek smashing down directly on his wrist during the Game 1 beam lighting is the only other thing in relation to a potential left wrist injury being suffered, makes this all weird and something you wouldn't want to believe. Did Vivek Ranadive accidentally smash his best player's hand and cost his team a chance at ending the Warriors dynasty. This theory gets particularly more believable when you consider how well Fox was shooting the ball with the brace on his finger for the very first time. Man made like four or five threes to start the game, all in a row. 
Of course, he'd have to get used to the new material on his shooting hand, but adjusting to a fractured finger, you'd expect that to take an adjustment phase. From there, you start to think a little deeper about things, like was this potentially the plan the whole time? For Fox to try and play through it, then if an injury was reported, which it was in Game 4 initially by Anthony Slater, then that's when the Kings could put a splint on his finger, and that's what they could attribute the hand injury to. Fox wasn't asked in particular about the altercation of the play, which leads you to believe the media either forgot to ask the question, or have an agenda to keep this narrative hidden. The Kings and Warriors do play for the same TV network and NBCS, meaning a narrative about one of the team's owners injuring a player would want to be swept under the rug for both sides of these two teams' shared NorCal media stations. That's just my wild theory. Peace.